We got even more Intel Ultra series this time with Dell XPS. Good afternoon, morning. Welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the 4-piece warranty, Augie Triple XL. And we have another Intel Ultra series, this time with an Intel Ultra 7155H in the Dell XPS 14 9440. There is actually quite a lot of different models under XPS now. Usually they did like a 13 or a 14 or a 15, and now they're doing all three. And there's a lot of different variants and flavor. But the 14 is the middle ground point and it's got generally all of the features that the 13 and 15 would have. So it became a no brainer in the one to use. I was, however, a little bit confused because this is an IPS monitor, not an AMOLED or an OLED display. That was a bit of a, uh, okay. But it's still not enough to make me go that this is not competitive or bad. So let's get straight into it. Now with the Intel Ultra Series, one thing you've got to remember is that the RAM is hard soldered onto the motherboard. So you can't actually upgrade it. That's why I'm going to always suggest get 16 gig. It is LP DDR5X, so it is very, very quick. Uh, and it, it does help it, that it's being that fast to, to get the most out of your Intel Ultra Series laptop. This whole notebook is powered by a tiny 60 watt charger. That's basically all you get in the box is a Type-C cable and then a 60 watt charger and then a three pin plug. Uh, it is South Africa, full three pin plug though. So we absolutely love that, don't we Mr. Dell? The main thing about this laptop is it's been created with an objective of power and mobility with the best possible battery life. And in those facets, it absolutely pulls it off. And it's got a couple of unique design cues, which we'll go through now. Looking at the port setup as a starter, on the right hand side, you're just gonna see two type C's. Both of them have full Thunderbolt though, so you can do displays or power through either of them. And then on the left hand side, you're gonna see more of the same, except there's a headphone jack and a little SD card reader. So it's really been set up with that in mind. This is, I would say, a high powered Adobe Suite specialist on the go. You're going to be able to do what you could only do with a MacBook Pro now on a normal Windows environment. So if you're more comfortable with that and you've got some applications like 3D stuff, for instance, you have to use Windows because of DirectX. So you can now get basically the best of both worlds. And with all of the same build quality, actually add a bit of a discount now, which is a big plus because Macs have ballooned in price to absolutely ridiculous levels. The monitor, as I said, is one of the kind of things that I especially feel that the price point of this particular unit is a bit lacking. Others from other brands in this price point are coming with an OLED display at at least sort of 2K or 2.5K resolution. This is 1920 by 1200. It's got that golden ratio 16 by 10. It does do 60 Hertz and 120 Hertz. It is very flat in its color profile, which is going to be good for the designers. And you'll see in the software later, you can tune it to get the preferred feel out of it for yourself. But it's still noticeably less sharp and less vibrant compared to the AMOLEDs with generally worse contrast ratios because it's IPS. It's still going to be limited by IPS glow and the way that the technology works. Below that, you're going to see the first bit of glass. This is a glass touch panel over here on top with your function keys built into that. If you hold in function, then it switches over to the normal F keys so that you can then use those if you need to, like Alt F4, for instance. It's an extra button you're going to press, but it's, uh, I prefer this setup because you're going to use these more often. A nice touch on that as well is you've got home end and insert and delete on the top right as well, which is really nice. So you get that full keyboard kind of feel and effect. Speaking of the keyboard, it's very nice in its feel. It also doesn't, you'll notice as I'm busy smashing it, the screen doesn't move at all. The backlighting, the fusing is not perfect, but we'll give it an 80%. I'll still give it a solid eight out of 10. It's 80% there. It does also have a Copilot button built in. So you've got a quick way to access the Copilot assistance, which is pretty cool. And then there's a seamless glass touchpad at the bottom. In the beginning, it is a little bit, where am I clicking? But <laughs> as you use it, you kind of get used to it. And it does have a noticeable ridge on its edge 
to then which will you'll acclimatize to using it i still think they should have put a beam down the middle just a little marker indicator to separate left from right because in the beginning as you use it you're going to bump into that looking around the bottom things get interesting on this side we've got cooling vents on left and right hand side that's actually where the fans are pulling in through that the only criticism i have for the bottom panel is that it uses torx screws which can be a little bit irritating but most service centers and such will have those the only thing you should be going in there for is to replace your battery or to upgrade your storage everything else you're not really going to have access to in general then along the back i've managed to get an angle where you can kind of see into it is the exhaust for the cooling and it does filter through like under the screen over here it's got a curve in it so that it pushes through under the base and not upwards in front of the screen so just typical dull good design the chassis itself is full aluminium and it does look very nice the little dull emblem on the back is nicely done as well nothing overly shouty and it's got the right kind of colors i would say for a professional environment it is a very pro type notebook it's not really built around gaming it can however do some of that because of the intel arc graphics that are built into it I actually managed to get like 70 fps solid on f123 with xcss however in performance mode but on medium settings so it can still game even when there is xcss stuff but it's not really its focus its focus is around this processor the 155h has 16 cores and 22 threads it means that when you're looking at multi-threaded processing like cinebench for example it thumps 13,000 worth of thump that's a full 10 minute test and single core performance way better than previous generation so that's its real focus and what it's about combine that with a 10 hour battery life and it's absolutely exceptional at doing adobe type tasks and design type tasks and work and office and etc on the go it's also got ridiculously good speakers this is a thing that dulls I saw with their new monitor as well, the 27.25H IPS, the entry level 100 hertz that I did a review on recently. It's got like a boombox built in and it's no different with this. Doing an audio test on that, it peaked at nearly 90 decibels. It's incredibly loud. It doesn't distort. However, on the top end, it is quite tinny. If you play it on a mid volume, it's actually quite warm. It's actually almost got like timber in it, which is a big plus. The fans on this as well don't make a huge noise. They only hit like the 40 decibel sort of range. Um, I did do other testing as well. Like I had to do, you know, the sort of defaults like a Geekbench as an example or some Blender. So I did do those tests as well and it performed pretty well. Considering this is a one 0.7 kilogram notebook it does pack a lot of punch into a very small space it's got the typical dull quality in build uh, the only of the the only one of the components that was a little bit of a drawback was the ssd the write speeds on it are not exactly good so it means that they've put a bit of a cheaper gen 4 in here which is a bit of a disappointment considering the price point of this laptop everything else is exactly as you wanted to see windows 11 pro so it's going to be able to do domain controllers it's got a really quick charge as well it went flat to full in less than two hours the first half charged in like 20 minutes um, that's just because of how lithium works you could look it up but basically those irons have to find parking spots quickly and um, it's easy when there's a lot of parking space is the way that kind of lithium works with its charge rate and so it does a good job of being a mobile product with a lot of power but like i said the monitor is a little bit like mm, that's a bit weird and if you don't really want to if you're not too fussed about ports and stuff and having a card reader the 13 inch makes a lot of sense it's considerably cheaper to go down to a couple of type c's you you do get a really cool adapter in the box with it actually let me get that quickly really cool. six and a half hours later here's the little guy here uh it's got an hdmi and a usb on it by default which is a kind of a nice little touch and if you get a pretty decent dock any thunderbolt type c dock of one of these ports is going to turn it into a full desktop replacement type of setup Alrighty, so this is a test of the built-in camera and microphone the camera is 1080p 30 fps mode right now that's its peak 
resolution and frame rate. And then I'm using the dual array pinhole microphones. And they are going to be echoey, but they do sound pretty good, I've got to say, all around. This is a sound-treated room, however. I do have sound dampening panels all spread across my studio environment over here. So it's probably not going to be quite as good as this, but it's basically raw into the machine. And I thought, what better way for me to show you the software of the machine than to record directly from it. So it's going to be a little bit out because this is 1920 by 1200, which is a 16 by 10 ratio. So it's going to cut off the bottom of the screen. But at least in this way, I can continuously test the camera and the microphone so you can see what you're buying. Now, for this included software, it's very basic and straightforward in a lot of good ways. If we go to applications over here, you've got your support assist, which is going to do all of your updates and such for you. We'll launch that in the background so long. Let me go back over here to this guy. Uh, in Built into this as well is a power mode, which I very much like. It's very sleek, simple and straightforward in this facet. You can do a dynamic charge policy and such on it, which is better honestly than if you're doing it kind of yourself you can change the charging mode if you want to over there but a big plus for me on this one is the quick easy performance mode enhancement you can also allow my dial to synchronize with the windows itself and it works flawlessly unlike other laptops where i've had to create power modes to get the best performance from them on the xps i haven't it basically was exactly the same if i used this or if i did stuff manually which is a big plus you've also got your intelligent battery extender which i used to do the continuous video playback test which improved it by about 20 percent which is a big plus and it's got peak shift which is kind of cool so you can choose when to charge it to help you save money not that we really benefit from that in south africa but it's a nice function to have over there um the rest of them are very simple and straightforward like the audio you can choose where to output bluetooth devices EQs and stuff which is kind of nice as well which we like over there you can change your base and you know the width and stuff and a couple nice little add-on functions which we don't mind you've got present detection which is nice so based on the camera and it can detect if you're there or not and use your face to unlock and stuff which is kind of cool you've got color and display which is a big plus you can actually calibrate the sucker over here so if we add this on now I can calibrate um, the display to my preference so i can add in saturation as an example which is just like a big plus for me and the fact i can change the color temperature and the gamma and such it's really really nice so if i go for vivid as an example you guys won't be able to really see it but these all have different uh, uh enhancements that come through onto the onto the thing which is kind of cool and then you can customize by application as well so if you want so if you launch a certain application it's going to use that based on like photoshop as an example you can have it in a more flat profile nice really nice little functions to have on hand then for the support assist this is where you're going to do your update so you just say update for software as an example and you just click start and then it'll automatically look for any software updates for you download and install them anywho that is all you have over here for your software not bloatware add by any measure which is a big plus let's go back to the studio it's definitely been made with mobility being its focus that's really what it's about 1.7 kilos, 10 hours worth of continuous video playback, very fast charging and a super powerful processor. It's doing, it's clearly been made for a niche. That niche, however, is extremely competitive right now. And I just feel like the, the pricing delimiting from Dell between its models doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Perhaps there's something else that I'm missing, but I've poked around this thing for a week and I just can't see it being all that competitive at its price point. This one is 50,000 Rand. The 13 inch is 38,000. So same 12,000 Rand, drop a couple of ports and you've got exactly the same notebook, just on a 13.3 inch design instead of a 14. It's kind of a no brainer to go for that one. That one in the market space is incredible. And then above that, you've got full OLED stuff, but you're paying an excessive amount to get access to that once again. I really do like it. I just feel like this 14 inch at 50K should have had an OLED. That's the only correction that I would make on this. And perhaps a little bit better storage, just those write speeds and stuff. That's very entry level gen for NVMe. And we can see based on the prices that we have like on Uncle Eve Tech, even on a retail point, a gen 4 one TB, like a good one is gonna set you back like 1,500 to 1,800 Rand. 
It's just a little bit outpriced. That's basically the long and the short of this. If this was 10% cheaper, it becomes very competitive in the market space. I like the build quality, the look and feel and the finish. Don't get me wrong, Dell's exceptional with that. You're also getting the on-site warranty, which is a 24 hour turnaround service where a, a technician comes with every spare you could possibly hope for, including a full like motherboard if you need it. And they'll do that replacement for you within like a 24 hour business day type of turnaround, which is nothing short of sick. I, it's, it's such a catch 22 because there's things about it that I really like, like the touchpad, which grew on me. Like as a user, the keyboard is one of the best I've ever used. And then it's just kind of let down weirdly by the monitor. Great camera, great built-in microphone, great added software features. None of it feeling bloatware-ish. Yeah, just give me a bit of monitors and storage, doll. And then we're there, and then we're there. So I can only give this eight out of 10 because there's two components that are short. Anywho. That is all I've got for you on the Dell XPS 9440. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side.